Yo, good morning. It's the morning for me. Don't know when you're watching this. Probably Sunday afternoon because that's when I release my videos. But today we're on something different. We're not actually at work. Technically, it's my second week of being self-employed. So technically, I'm not getting paid today. But we're going on a factory tour at Armeg. So I mentioned it in my previous videos. But yeah, I'll do some more filming when we hop in the van with Nick. And we're heading up to Sheffield. So it's two hours in the van and we'll have a chit chat with Nick. And we're in the van. He's yeah, here. we're in the van. And he's refused to give me a microphone. Yeah, I have. No one wants to hear Nick anymore, do they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're a bit early, so we stopped off for a cheeky Mackey's. Got a cappuccino. What have you got? A toffee latte. Toffee latte. Toffee latte. Uh, how is life about me? Technically, even though we still work together. Bliss. Mint. Beautiful. <laughs> Money-wise, I've earned a bit more. Obviously, because I'm only just starting out and building customer base, so I'm not actually... But then I've only worked like half the amount of yeah. days. I've worked 10 working days so far yeah. and I'm on the same amount of money so far. So it's like, well, it's a no brainer really for at the minute. But yeah, another thing. Oh God, what? On the phone to Nick last night, I always say at the minute, bits and bats. Oh, right, yeah. So I, it's bits and bobs. I say bits and bobs. Oh, what are you doing today? I'll just say bits and bobs. And he says bits and bats. Right, we finally made it. Hour and a half at Armeg. So let's go and have a look around. Doesn't look that big from here, but it goes all the way around the corner. So whatever. Like right then, we're at the factory now, and we're at the first stage. So here, I'm, you might be really, really loud because there's loads of machines going on, and everything's metal made. He's here. Um, yeah. So here's the raw materials. I don't actually know. There's loads of different grades of steel, different sizes. Obviously, it's all real high tough stuff, imported in. And then uh, the factory here, they make everything in the UK, which is nice. So some of it is still made in the UK for a change. So as you all know, the brockets, which are used to do the bushes up, they are made there. So they're different sizes and they're milled out precisionly. So some of them, what they do is they come out of that conveyor belt and drop into here. What we're at now is this machine here. I'm not going to get re real technical because I forgot all the names. Um, but yeah, what we've got here is a shank where it's not been fluted or anything yet. That's the next stage after this. And there it's popping them out with a cone on the end. I don't know how well you can see that. And then uh, the start of the STS Plus bit. And then they'll engrave the bit which goes into the chuck further along the line. You can see it there. It's like a big lathe really going around. And then here it comes. Jobs are good. And we've got a little bit of behind the scenes here. A new up and coming product, which isn't released yet. So this is a 5.5 one. And uh, it's got a stop end. So as you can see there, on the end of my finger, that's a stop end. So the drill bit won't go in any deeper. Um, so this is gonna be great for your red plugs and your screws, the old traditional method. This is how they're made. This one's a bit clearer. You can see right down in there. So we've got oil cooling it down. Cause obviously it's um, laving it out and it's, uh, currently, it's uh, etching uh, the size and the Armeg logo on it. That's currently making that part now. That's it done, that one I've just showed you. And what was that process? About 90 seconds, was that? I believe so, yeah. So, nice and fast. And obviously, that's high engineering equipment, way far above our pay grades. So, it just goes there. And then when the next one come along, it will push it onto here. A bit like the old 2P machines, it'll push it along into the bucket. Oh, there we go. Caught that on live action flying out of there. So these are the roofing bolts, um, which everyone uses for fixing tray work and roofing bolts. Hence they're called roofing bolt things. Um, so yeah, really cool. And they are actually, yeah, there's another one. And then they're made here. I can't really see the oils on the uh, screen. But I'll just give you a bit of a rundown. So as you can see, all four sides are the same. And this machine here is a lot more faster and efficient because it's 50-50, so each side is um, the same. So it can be machines each side the same. So like ones, whereas other things take a lot longer, say like when you're doing the fluting, because it has to go all the way around. Whereas this, it's doing this 50-50 from each side as such. If that makes sense, I think that's right. Is that correct? I'm semi-correct. I'm getting a nod, so that's good. So we're still at that station where they're making the roof bolts. And this is all the excess swarf um, from the excess material that's been laved off. But it's quite cool, actually. They're saying, are they collecting these big tubs? And then it goes off to a specialist recycling plant 
where they decontaminate everything and then recycled back into use on other items. Then on to the next product. So here we have some of the box cutters. As you can see, they're all stacked there nicely for me to put in the van. Nah, only joking. And then, uh, oh, I'll get on to them in a minute. So this is the machine which does that. I don't want to show too much because obviously don't want to give all the tricks and trades away. But by the looks of it, that's on like some lathe. And then this machine here puts the edge on it, gives the sharp edge on the underside. So uh, if I go onto this one here, you can see how it's chamfered edges. So it will cut nice. And then also on this stage, there's a few machines around here. There's this one here. So these are the uh, chisel bits where you can put the teeth in and then uh, cut all your block work nice and neat. We're over at this stage here where they're making these big drill bits and they're doing channeling out to put the tips in. This machine here, as you can see there, has channeled out the end very precisely. And then you've got the tip there. So that'll slot in like so. And then it's welded. Welded in place, is it? Uh, raised in place. Yep. yep. Heat treated. Um, raise in place which we can have a look at in a minute so over here we've got some trays this is just a table where they're sorting out some stuff and as you can see all the drill bits here nicely stacked nicely presented so each worker when they get come to pick up a box it's all nice and neat and they know what they're working with we're over at a different machine here i can't show you too much but this machine here in here loads them up so you can put drill bits as wide as this about a meter long and then they are Obviously you've got no SDS shank as such where it goes into the drill. So this machine here is loading them up and then it will engrave the SDS shank onto it. So uh, I'll, I'll run around the other side now and show you what the finished product looks like. So we're over at the other side now and as you can see they're flying out there every 30 to 50 seconds ish. Quicker than that really. And then this is how they test them. So that's like mimicking your drill to make sure it goes in nice and crusty. And obviously, uh, there's quite a few in there. We're over at the less noisy side, away from the big machines. And over here, we've got this little robotic arm, which, um, can I say the process a little bit yeah, as yeah. such? So we, a bit of glue go, goes in there, and then the magnet goes in, which makes it magnetic into your uh, nut driver. So it's fairly simple, but it's still pretty high tech and way over my head. So yeah, cool. So just before they get heat treated and the tip sprays in, uh, we crimp. We crimp the, the metal at the side and the tip gets pressed in, the carbide tip gets pressed in just enough so that it, it doesn't move in the furnace and then the next the next station uh, locks it in for good and you're never getting it out. So he dips in the cement and from there uh, he then dips it in a, a sea bronze powder, which is powder metallurgy. So it looks like uh, a sherbet dip now. <laughs> yeah. Got your hot uh, chocolate powder on there. Hot chocolate powder on, sticks it on the furnace, uh, which is gonna now heat it to 1100 degrees. The powder will melt at 950 degrees and it will fill all the gaps. Uh, and, and then through the furnace, it gets heat treated. Try and get that tip out of there. Now you've got to heat it to over a thousand degrees to have any chance of getting that tip out. And if somebody does that while they're drilling, then they're doing something wrong. So this is what they're like once they've been tipped. And this is what secures the tip into place, which we were showing you, which was routed out. Not routed, I'm just, I think everything's a router. What we've got going on here is uh, strength testing. So the chaps were saying that there's they a diamond. Nick, Nick not to put his arm in, that's what they said. <laughs> break it. No, put your arm in, mate. Let's see what happens. I think I'll be driving home if you did that. Yeah, um, yeah so what we said is, They've got a diamond tip in here, and I can't remember what scale they said, but there's three different scales for strengthness testing, and then this machine tests it. So previously... Between, it was 40, 45 and 55 is hardened steel. Yeah, and then previously, when they first come as raw material, they were around eight on the scale, whereas now they've been through the heat treatment process and all the other little bits and bobs which we can't show that it's on 49.9 this one, so it's well within the parameters. We're over at another station now, so they're just checking, making sure that the drill bits are perfectly straight for when you're doing that precise angled drilling. Fuck yeah. Don't even start. Six, it's wide, isn't it? Yeah, you could. <laughs> Same way behind you, you have to... So we've got a torque screwdriver here. Obviously we all use that on your fuse boards. Got loads of cool little bits and bobs, like little sets like this with everything in, your bit holders, little ratchet. And then this set here is for, oh, just close the lid. 
this set here is for uh, when you've got a screw stuck in and you can't get it out, it's rounded off, you just drill it with this special bit and then put it in reverse and it'll come straight out. So we've all been in that situation before. And that's a wrap. So our oh Meg, thanks for having us. Give us a massive goodie bag full of stuff and then there's some more stuff turning up in the post because there's a laugh for some stuff, eh? They've showed us how to make it all. So uh, go ask for a few little things. Oh, Nick's just having a look. Oh, sorry, man. There you are, my cat on. <laughs> Looks like a child's bottle in your hand. <laughs> they've, given, shoot. they've given us this. Uh, Nick, that's a personalised. Look at this. Oh, it's a 50th. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It, oh, is there something on the other side of it? Or is it just a coin? I don't think it's meant to come. Oh, I don't think it's meant to come oh is it a brocket? No. What is it? It's their 50th anniversary. Like, it's a limited edition coin with our names on. Nice. That's very cool. Thank you very much. Oh. Thanks, Armeg, for having us and giving us all these bits and bobs to use bits and bats. No. Can't say bits and bobs. bobs. Can't say bits and bobs, bits and bats. Got a torch. Ow. Um, Nick's like a kid at Christmas. You see my brain? <laughs> see, that's bogeys. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching. Catch you next one. Bye.